Then he says in 26, and by the way, do you see that Abraham knew how they lived on earth? Because Abraham had been dead physically, but he knew this is how you lived, this is how he lived. Mm. By the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. But go ahead. So earlier we was talking about the damned, where they go. <laughs> where do they go? Open up Luke 16. Open up Luke 16 if you can. Okay. Luke 16. Let me get some of the drink. Luke 16. Okay. I want you to read from 19 to 21. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. Typically, by the way, I'll let you know, purple was often a color, you know, purple clothing worn by kings, those who are like, have authority. Just side note, but keep going. Oh, okay. Why doesn't nobody wear purple now then? Because then they're going to think you're special. But anyway. <laughs> there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen. And lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with so sores. Uh, I can't read. And longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Now, Even before you move on, let me explain what Jesus is going to teach. Now, guys, I'm going to also do this as a preaching, expository preaching, where we're going to learn some life lessons. I'm going to kill several birds, one stone. The rich man is living lavishly. He's enjoying life to the fullest. The rich man is at the gate, which means that the rich man is aware of his condition. How do we know? Because, number one, the rich man would have servants, and he himself would have would exit the gate, enter the gate, because he's not going to stay home all day, right? So he goes out, comes in, he sees this man full of sores, physically in pain, hungry, and he doesn't show him a lick of mercy, right? Right? Right, right. Oh, I, I thought you was... No, I'm talking to you too. I mean, you're going to have to answer specifically. The people there are not going to... Okay, so, okay. right? So he does show him yeah. mercy, right? Right, right. Now watch here. Keep reading. Okay. The time came... Well, I, this is not that part. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. This is the significant. Be, let's break it down, brother. Okay, now, here, the word for dogs is the word used elsewhere for a rabid dog, a dog that is out of control... A dog that is rabied and needs to be put down. It's the word that Jesus uses in Matthew 7, 6, where he says, do not give what is sacred to dogs or give you know, cast pearls before swine, right? Right. It's the same word used by John in Revelation 22, 15, where he says, outside of the kingdom are the dogs. So notice these rabied dogs who are merciless are showing mercy and compassion to Lazarus Something the rich man doesn't do. So what does that tell you about the rich man? He's even He's worse, worse than, than the dogs. dogs. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now continue. Now you read to 21. Read now 22, 23. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. That's Abraham's bosom, right? Now, yes. Now, what did they carry? It says Lazarus died. So what were they carrying? What did the angels carry? Him. They said carried him. him. He died. What him? What part of him? His soul? You got it. You don't carry the body. The body dies, decays, deteriorates, returns to the dust. But they're carrying him, meaning his inner person, his soul, right? Right, right, right. So notice the soul can be carried by spirit creatures, and the soul has a shape of some kind by which you are still recognizable and it's still you, and you can be distinguished from another soul. You caught it? Right. Okay. So now read the next part. Keep reading to 23. The rich man also died and was buried. So what was buried? What do you bury when a man dies? His body. So when the rich man died, because he, unlike Lazarus, he has family, they buried him. But what do you bury? The body. But then now notice what it says. Read it. 23. All the way. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away. With Did Lazarus, but where is he? In where is he? In but where? It looks Read like it's hell. But he what does it say? What's the word? Hades. He's in Hades. So when the rich man was buried, he himself was in Hades in torment. Mm -hmm. So what part of him is in Hades? Because if he's buried, which part of him was buried? 
Well, his body was buried. So what part of him was in Hades? His soul. Ah, but did you see that you are your soul, you are your body? Because it didn't say his body was buried, his soul was there. It goes, he was buried, and he was in Hades. Right. So it's connected. So the Bible often will call your body you, and often will call your soul you. So, oh, we buried Protestant. Oh, but Protestant's in heaven, but I thought you buried him. Yeah, because his body was buried, his soul is in heaven. So I can speak of his body as him and his soul as him. So he was buried, but he's in Hades. I, the body was buried, but the soul is in Hades, but it's experiencing torment. So the, number one, even in the realm of the dead, when our bodies return to the dust until the resurrection, we continue to experience sensation and emotions. We still have sensation, feelings, and emotions because he's feeling torment. Mm. Number two, we have awareness because if you can feel torment, that means you're aware and we recognize one another because in that verse it says afar off. So he knew they're a great distance away. So in the realm of the dead or the spirit realm, it is a dimension that has space and place because you travel. Oh, he's over there. Right. So there's distance. So there's space. There's place. And he recognizes Abraham and Lazarus by his side, right? Right. How can he know Abraham and Lazarus and distinguish Abraham from Lazarus if Abraham and Lazarus, though without physical bodies, still as souls, they have a soulish spiritual form and shape by which you can distinguish them? Wow. You caught that's, it? Yeah. That's, wow. But another... No. Important lesson before you ask me a question. Important lesson you learned from this. Did the Lord ever give Lazarus relief in this world? What do you mean by that? Well, you read it. What was Lazarus begging for? Oh, he was begging for the rich man's food at the table. And how about his physical condition? Was he sick? Did yes. he have sores? Did the Lord ever give him relief in this world? I want to say no, because I didn't see it. No, of course not. That's the point. He died in that state. Right. Now, Laz uh, the rich man living a hedonistic lifestyle, partying up, right. you know, gluttony, sexual perversion, enjoying life to the fullest. Did God ever punish him in this world? No. Another lesson you learn, my brothers and sisters in Christ, contrary to what some teachers will teach you, God doesn't always come to save and vindicate the righteous in this life, nor does he always come and condemn the wicked in this life. God may allow the wicked to prosper till they die, like you, Hefner, and all Christians to suffer and even be killed because your vindication comes in the day of judgment and their destruction takes place in the afterlife at the day of judgment. All right, now, now watch the vindication and the role reversal. Remember, in this world, Lazarus was at the mercy of the rich man, right? Right. Now, to answer your question, where do the damn go? To Hades, to show, to be tormented. Right there, you see it? Luke 16, well, 23. Now, notice the role reversal, though. Remember, in this world, Lazarus was at the mercy of the rich man, right? Right. Watch the role reversal. So when he sees Abraham and Lazarus afar off, Notice 24 and 25, 24 and 25. So he could call to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Oh, he's begging for mercy. Yeah, uh, yep. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water. Now he's dependent on Lazarus to show him mercy and comfort. Right. Whereas in this world, Lazarus was dependent on the rich man to comfort him. Now the rich man needs Lazarus to comfort him. You caught it? Yeah. Send caught it. Lazarus to dip his finger in this water, right? Right? And my tongue to experience the coolness temporarily because I'm in agony in the flames. Read 24. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Now notice, however the spiritual dimension exists, it is different from the physical universe but similar enough to it because even in this place, 
you have water. Right. Even in this place, he can see that Lazarus has fingers. Even in this place, he can speak of his tongue being tormented. So the spiritual dimension is a dimension that is unlike the earth, but similar enough to it that there's continuity. It's not the same, but similar. You caught it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he's now at the mercy of Lazarus, like Lazarus was at the mercy at him. So notice what Abraham says to him in Luke 16, 25. This is the, actually the good part, I ain't gonna lie, because at the end, it's something that he says that hits home. But um, but Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime, you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides, yes. No, don't go to 26 yet. Here is the ultimate vindication and judgment. Lazarus suffered miserably till he died. Now he's in everlasting peace, rest. No more pain, no more suffering. You enjoyed your pleasures. You enjoyed life to the fullest on earth. Now is time for you to experience punishment and suffering that never ends. Mm. Right. Caught the, you see that now? Yeah. Okay, so, but now notice another thing. Abraham knows this is one of his descendants. Son, you're my son, Father Abraham. But notice, Abraham has no pity for him. Do you know why he has no pity for him? Because he didn't have pity for Lazarus. That's why Jesus says, if you don't show mercy, you will not be shown mercy. Right. If you don't grant mercy and be merciful, you will not be given mercy. And in heaven, none will be merciful to you. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. This is what Jesus is telling you. Rather you have friends in heaven who will show you mercy and pity you and love you but the way you make friends in heaven is how you behave on earth because if you show no pity or mercy or compassion in this life those in heaven will show you no mercy no pity no compassion if you don't give mercy you shall receive none in the life to come amen then he says in 26 and by the way do you see that abraham knew how they lived on earth yeah, they hedonistic. Yeah, hedonistic life it tells you that it is a lie, and it's not biblical to assume that those in heaven are not aware of people's lives and conditions on earth. Because Abraham had been dead physically, but he knew this is how you lived. This is how he lived. Mm. So you mean like they? So like, if I was to run somebody over with a car right now, right? God forbid. Yes. It depends. Abraham, Abraham knows I did that. It, it depends. God will reveal whatever he wants the saints in heaven to know. Mm. And it's his prerogative how much he reveals, how much he keeps. So it's not clear that he reveals all things to them, but we know he does reveal some things, if not most things to them. That's the point. Right. 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 That's the point. Okay. I'm not saying he has to reveal everything to them. Right. But, but again, the point is, does God reveal things to people in heaven and make them aware? Absolutely. Here it is, Abraham. In fact, I'm going to show you how much Abraham knew, even though he wasn't on earth. Now, remember, Moses and the prophets came long after Abraham, right? Right. Like a thousand years. Abraham was dead about 400 years before oh. Moses came. And the prophetic writings, the writings of Moses and the prophets came centuries after his death, right? Right. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, read... 26 all the way to 29 26 29 we're almost done with this and besides all this between us and you a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us now this is not purgatory by the way because purgatory as understood historically is not the place of the dam it's a place of believers where it's purifying fire to purge them to cleanse them on the merits of jesus christ to enter heaven these people that are in hades tormented they're damned they're not coming out it's over yeah that's you're done because what did he say right. you enjoyed life now you're receiving punishment now it's time for punishment you're not forgiven because what did God say? If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you don't show mercy, you won't be shown mercy. So he died in an unmerciful, unforgiving state. So he's cut off. He's severed. 
This is everlasting destruction. So those are there. They're not coming out. Those in glory, they won't lose. So that's why when people tell me, well, if believers will be judged on the day of judgment, on the day when Christ comes, but they're already in heaven, why will they be judged? Like here, Abraham and Lazarus are already in a state of peace. And Abraham says, he and I are in peace and bliss, comfort, no more pain, no more suffering. And we'll never end up where you're at. Our fate is sealed. It's everlasting security and peace and comfort. So then why will they go before the Lord in judgment? Because that's where God will then reward them for what they've done in the body and assign to them their ranks and positions. Amen. You got it? Yeah. Okay, but now it gets better. So what does it say? Keep reading, man. Come he on. said it gets better. It does get better, though. It does. Yes, it does. He answered, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place torment. Abraham now, replied. On, oh. Notice it's a place of torment, right? All right. So the damned are tormented, right? And he's afraid his brothers will die in the same condition as him and end up in torment with him, right? All right. But did you notice that the, the rich man is still <clears throat> bossing people around and commanding people and giving orders? He first tells Abraham, send Lazarus. And now he says, send one, send one here to my brothers. So it's all about him again. Right. How they can benefit him, how can they can serve him. And he's the one demanding or ordering what he wants them to do for him. Send Lazarus to me. So he's telling Abraham, send him to me. And I tell Abraham, send him, please. In other words, it's all about him. It's all about him and his own. Do you catch the selfish attitude? Okay, now, what, what does Abraham tell him? Because he's saying, send someone here from the realm of the dead to appear on earth to convince them not to come here, that this place is real. Avoid it. Now, what does he say? Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said. Oh, he's telling them no. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. That's the biggest now, one right there. Now, let me ask you something. How did Abraham know that on earth currently at that moment, the Jews had the Old Testament scriptures? They had Moses and the prophets. I guess God told him. So you mean God made known to Abraham? Prophets came after him that wrote scriptures that are preserved and that people have access to. Because notice what he says to him. Well, your brothers have Moses and the prophets. Well, Moses wasn't there. He had died. The right. prophets were dead. So it means they have the writings of Moses and the prophets. Right. Moses and the prophets. If they believe Moses and the prophets, then they have enough there to warn them about God's wrath and that they need to repent. They go, no, that's not enough because I had them too. It didn't do anything for me. Well, that's why. <laughs> you know yeah. He goes, well, if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, then they won't even believe, even if someone rises from them. Now, Jesus is talking and he's speak, speaking in irony. You Jews don't really believe the Moses and the prophets because if you really believe Moses and the prophets, you would believe me and turn to me. But because you don't believe them, you won't even believe when I rise from the dead and leave the tomb empty, but try to explain it away. Mm. If you don't truly understand and believe what Moses and the prophets have written about salvation, the coming Messiah, then you're going to miss miss who I am. Right. You're going to miss me, meaning not miss me all week, but like, oh, you're not going to figure out who I am. And even when I leave the tomb empty, you still won't be convinced, but explain it away because you have not believed, meaning understood and appreciated mm -hmm. what the prophets had said Messiah would do, that he would die and rise from the dead so that when the tomb is empty, because you don't believe what they've said about Messiah or understood what they said about Messiah, you won't believe the tomb is empty because you won't believe I'm the one. Right. So if that answers your question, they're in Hades for now in torment. 